Welcome to Shimkent and welcome to Kazakhstan again. High five. And today we're just about to go and explore the old city of Shimkent. So come and have a look with us. As we enter the old city, we received some good news. There was some sort of promotion apparently and and uh, it was free for us today. So this is pretty spectacular. Um, and quite a bit of it. Now we've already touched the, the wall tiles and they are, to me, look like travertine. But they might be limestone or something like that, but they're like um, little briquettes, but they're put on like tiles. So I'm not sure what the history of that is, if that's a reconstruction of what the old fort used to be. But there's a sign here, and I'll have a little look and see if I can't figure out what's going on by reading the English part. Hang on. Museum of the Catacombs, Archaeological Excavations of the... 11th to 13th century the citadel of the 19th century okay that's number three uh, residential quarter of the 16th to 17th century the southeastern part of the sharistan of the 10th to 12th century a hoots a bazaar the southern western part of shazakhstan uh, of the 16th and 17th century and archaeological excavations of the end of the 3rd century BC and the beginning of the 2nd century BC. Okay, the old stuff is what I like. Let's go and have a look. I can't really see down there very well because it's got glass covering it. But there's a, uh, a man sitting down there in the bottom, quite deep. I'm going to say five, six metres deep uh, in this round structure. Darling, what is it? Well, it's um, it's called Zindan. Zindan is um, it's like a ground prison where the person who is punished uh, sits there for a prolonged period of time with a minimum of food and water um, until the punishment is over. Okay, so this is a, an old excavation area. I think this is, um, looks like it's merely just the foundations. And this is what a house used to look like in the second and third century BC. That's unusual, you can walk straight up to it. It's made out of mud bricks. The tiles on the floor are mud tiles by the looks of it. A lot of broken pottery on the side here, including a, a bone. And um, I don't know, I've had a few x-rays of mine that could, that could possibly be a knee bone. It was just sitting there. And here I am inside of a house from the uh, before Christ period, second, third century. And there's our little cooking apparatus, call it a stove, an oven. And um, yeah, it's quite easy to see how that worked. And you just placed whatever you were cooking on top. And we got some pottery. And you can just walk around the old. This is like, I mean, it's covered over to protect it, but I can just walk around it freely. Not that I'm damaging it, but um, it's very rare that you can go to an archaeological site and actually walk around it without um, it all being roped off. 
you can see or well, I can see the construction there is mud bricks and you can see hay uh, through it to give it its strength and um, yeah so that you can easily see how people lived I don't know if this would be more than one dwelling I think it probably or maybe not maybe it's one big dwelling We've got one room here, a room up the back, another room, a hallway out, and then, of course, you've got the kitchen there. Okay, so it's all we've got all different sections. And here looks um, definitely made out of mud. I'm just a bit concerned, like everything is such in such good condition that I don't know. I hope it's not reproduction. But uh, if it is, then when you get through the walls and you see the dwellings, they're all covered over with these domes to protect them. Yet um, you're free to walk around them. The dome on that's all made out of mud. And they've got terracotta bricks inside it though. Mud stuck on the outside. So, as I say, I'm not sure if this is reproduction or um, just to demonstrate how things were made or whether it's actual archaeological site. You find an area here under glass see animal bones and broken pottery um, that's more what I would expect to be archaeological yet um, here we are with the foundations of, uh, of dwellings again that I can just walk through They used to make their apartments bigger than what the Soviets did. <laughs> it's much roomier. And to think we went on a a road trip tour to see wild poppies growing in the Kazakhstan fields and here they are growing all around us wild poppies okay in the ground of this this room you can see the remains of a a buried amphora. Um, I think that's the ancient way. Big clay pot, half buried, is the way you store your water. And here we are with the, on the city walls, guns ready to fire. As you can see. Every uh, 40 or 50 metres is a cannon, making sure whomever it is out there in modern Shim Kent has kept a bay. And we've got some inner city walls as well. But uh, what I'm standing on at the moment, this wall here, goes uh, right around the site. These poppies will grow anywhere, given the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, just looking at this, I'm trying to decide whether it's an amphitheatre, a place to uh, sit and watch entertainment, but it's all tiled, which 
gives me the impression that it could possibly be a massive big swimming pool. Um, so it does have a water source going into it. But uh, there's no, nothing in the middle to suggest a fountain. Maybe it's a future project. Okay, and this little archway here gives us the opportunity to have a look and see how it's constructed. Uh, it looks like it's all uh, clay bricks. And uh, with p timber poles to support the ceilings, the roofs. Well, this is a very intact building. Um, I'm saying this is a reconstruction and uh, it all must be something you'd expect to find in Mexico but this is not in Mexico it's about as far away as you can get from Mexico what have we got inside oh very cozy Oh, this would be very cosy and quiet and dry, cool in the summer, warm in the winter. And more furs on the wall. Table is set. Oh. I heard the word camera and I'm not allowed to use it. The Karen disease is spreading around the world. So, come to a place like this and, yep, not allowed to take a fat photo or video inside the building. Um, you'll see that there's nothing that's of sensitive nature. Um, there's nothing that would upset anybody's culture. But we just like to make rules and um, we like to complain and tell people what to do for no apparent reason. It's just the, the Karen disease, it's just it's all over the world. Yeah, so we just had a conversation with uh, Karen, who um, is our um, is paid here to be a tourist guide information yeah, officer, yeah. I imagine. Um, so after she said that we can't take photos or video, um, Elena decided to pick her brain and ask her about some of the costumes inside and she was kind of short and didn't want to answer. Well, I asked her about a, a particular question about uh, female costumes and um, she couldn't answer. So I couldn't, asked her... Couldn't or wouldn't? Probably both. Couldn't or wouldn't. Yeah, so it just, I, we, we've experienced it a bit, haven't we? Since we've yes, been we here. Did. We've been here for this is our, what, our third day. Mm. And... Um, yeah, just asking people, because you know, Lana speaks Russian, they all speak Russian. Just little questions like, uh, which direction to the park? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Just, um, and it, not once, but every single time. It's, that's the response that you get when you ask a normal, polite question that somebody, some visitor might ask. Uh, nobody's interested in talking to you. Nobody's interested in, in assisting you. Another example, as I mentioned, I've showed this place before. And I thought while we were uh, about five metres away, we asked Elena if she'd ask Karen if she could tell us what this is, because it's a bit of a mystery. And um, instead of just saying, oh, we'd say, she just went, oh, it's an information board over there. So that's the sort of friendly response that you'll, you'll get uh, from everyone we've met so far <laughs> in Shim Kent. <laughs> now, normally I blame the video if you can't read what's written on the information board, but... Uh, the information is clearly not there so uh, it's just gonna have to remain a mystery as to what this is because our tour guide person Karen over there is uh, certainly not interested in telling us anything and um, so if anyone ever finds out we'd be like to just put it in the comments because we'd be interested to know ourselves 
All right, so we've uh, spotted a bunch of horses, or well, mainly camels. A lot of camels, two hump camels from this part of the world, judging from these representations. And uh, found another local. So uh, see how we go. Mate, can you just tell us what uh, what that uh, big pool thing is up there? What's that, what's that about? Okay. Well, similar response that we're getting from... Uh, the professional Karens. We'll keep trying. Okay, so from inside the inner walls of the fort. And get up to the peak. We've definitely decided that it's all reconstruction. It's um, we're walking on concrete right now. The walls are concrete too, so. But then you get areas like that that look like they really could be remains of archaeological sites, but. They're covered in grass and wild poppies and the grass too is even interesting to me looks like it could be a wild form of wheat to me perhaps but uh, yeah well, anyway it's a fun experience go on the side have a look around before someone tells us we can't video oh gee I like the desk and the clock Beautiful clock. And uh, di distant sounds of horsemen fighting. Picture of horsemen fighting. Beautiful furniture, beautiful old furniture. That reminds us of the desk that we've got at home. Mm. It's not that Another room with some pottery. Some pictures. After being in Greece and everything's thousands of years before Christ uh, nothing seems old to me anymore so when you see something like this that says it's the 13th to 14th century I think, oh, that's pretty new what have we got through here? okay more depictions of life inside the old city. Some uniforms. Oh, this is how they did their plumbing. A series of terracotta pipes connected together. Oh, Persian family law. And if it says you think about who gets everything and who has to pay alimony. We've got some coins, like little bits of beaten copper. Speaking of beaten copper, <laughs> looks like how we make all of our cooking pots and stuff. So. A man sitting inside. Looks like he's depicting outside though. And like all post-Soviet places, they love their military stuff. Everyone, every opportunity they can get, likes to get dressed up in military gear.
and the view is pretty good and pretty vast from up here at the top of the old city. Nice piece of real estate really. Yeah, this section here is a genuine uh, old mud brick construction. That's the sort of condition you would expect it to be in. Uh, so that'd be, that's hundreds of years old that is. So this is the site of the old city, but a lot of it's reconstruction. For instance, those walls there are made of concrete. And that's the old city. So now we're going to try and walk to our next place of interest before the massive storms that we keep getting text messages about actually hit because we're getting dark skies all around us now. And here we are. We found this. Now. I don't know what it is, and uh, normally I'd ask a local, but um, that hasn't been successful so far. But it's there, it is, and we can see it, and it's right near a very, very large flag of Kyrgyzstan. Nope, Kazakhstan, not Kyrgyzstan. So, anyway, we'll go over here and investigate and see if we can't find out what this is. Looks like something you could put your roses in. Uh, although now it looks like the water would leak out. Um, I'm relieved it's, it's not something you can walk into because um, I don't do climbing up stairs and ladders and getting up a high. But my faithful companion absolutely loves to. And uh, if there was a stairwell up amongst that, or a ladder, or a piece of string, she would be up there like a rat up a dry drain pipe. But uh, because it's smaller in scale than what I looked like when we were down the city proper, we imagined that it would be much bigger. But still, it's significant, isn't it? So, anyway, I'll go for a walk and see if I can find out what it is. Big uh, trip on the wall. I'm sure it explains everything. But unfortunately, not in the language that I can understand and I'm not sure it's a language that my Russian speaking wife would even understand so it may remain a mystery tell us in comments below so we found ourselves in a park and there's some dates up all years in this century um, but everything's in Kazakh which I suppose it's not surprising considering we are in Kazakhstan but there's um, there's no translations or anything around in this part of the world it's just either you know or you don't know but the main thing is I think we found the world's 
biggest Kazakhstan flag. Help us grow, like, share and subscribe. And the world's biggest Kazakhstan flag is in a very prime situation right here, right down the avenue. One thing that I've never really talked about is I got a crippling fear of heights. When I walked to the edge of those stairs this thing, oh boy, it was a challenge. But anyway, um, very narrow stairs and very steep decline. And what have we got here? Some kind of a pond. Perhaps that's what um, that mystery thing was in the old city. And what have we found here, darling? Another monument? What do you think this one is? I think it's uh, the monument dedicated to the Independence uh, Day. Uh, I don't know. So that's Independence Day, the movie? Uh, no, the, I mean the day when they become independent from, uh, from the Soviet Union. Oh! Okay. Not the movie. <laughs> In this city of Shimkent, you can buy strawberries anywhere you go, including the botanical gardens. So when you're in Shimkent, you can uh, always find yourself a bit of nature. Even though we're in the city, we're in the botanical gardens here. We've got a lovely lake. And we've even got some, some ducks. So just there with that lady sitting there with a the green top on. She just came down and um, we were sitting there. Just came down in Russian. Asked the lion if we'd move. And uh, we stood up, thinking that she wanted to take a photo, because that's what she said. And then she just propped herself down where we were sitting. She just wanted us to leave, so she could have our spot where we were sitting. That's the sort of thing we're finding in Kazakhstan. So that's the lake, beautiful. I'd have to say it's peaceful. There's nothing peaceful about the park here, I'm afraid. That's a uh, Ibex, which is uh, native to this area. This guy is very well behaved to stand there, giving me all the opportunities I can, all the opportunities I need, rather, to take a video of him. And this fella reminds me of when my son was a teenager. And we had the radio one in the background, song by Skyhooks. And uh, all of a sudden, Casey said to me, Hey Dad, what's wrong with saying eagle? I said, what do you mean? There's nothing wrong with saying eagle. He goes, well, why are they singing eagle? It's not a dirty word. All right, so that was a lovely day in uh, the botanical gardens at Shimkent again another botanical garden again maybe I don't quite understand what a botanical garden is because to me it's just wild 
bushland, but it's got a lovely lake, this one. Uh, no flowers to be seen, but a nice place to come for a day and a walk around. So we're coming to the end of our visit of uh, Shimken, and um, we've enjoyed it. We've seen a few things, and we've done a fair bit of walking, I can tell you that. We're uh, headed off to another place uh, tomorrow on a bus. That should be interesting, but when we get there, will be a new video. Now this is a this place we're going to. I don't think uh, too many people go there, although it does look like it's worth the trip. Um, but it's um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So please remember to subscribe if you enjoy uh, our way of looking at things and our travels and having a look at the places that we're going to. And uh, up here and up here. We're going to have um, a video for you to watch and also a playlist to look at. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.